bigger the hit, the harder it sucks. They've directed some of the worst big budget Hollywood films around, and somehow they're still getting work. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Hollywood directors. For this list, we're looking at the directors who may have had some hits, but also have an overwhelming number of misses under their directorial belts, and are generally considered terrible. If we're gonna die, I want you to know something. I was in a pharmacy a while ago. There was a really good looking pharmacist behind the counter. Really good looking. I went up and I asked where the cough syrup was. I didn't even have a cough. Number 10, Stephen Brill. With his filmography, including such cinematic flops as Without a Paddle, mm, that was good. That was real good. And Little Nicky. <laughs> Brill's movies have been universally panned. Horrible scripts are punctuated by horrible direction, making for a unique combination of awful. Maybe it was because of this cake I ate earlier. While Brill has written and acted in some okay films, including everyone's favorite hockey movie, his attempts at directing fall short. He has more movies set for future release, ensuring the world hasn't seen the last of his movie failures. You just need to take a couple of real deep breaths and you'll get over it. Number nine. Tyler Perry. Now hold up, wait a minute, let me put some churching in it. He may have found a way to fund his stage to screen films without the use of major studios, but it doesn't mean his movies have been any good. Shut, Shut up, up, bastard. With his slew of Medea films and Woman Thou Art Loose plot themes, Perry's films have continuously towed the line between boring and predictable. <laughs> More often than not, they seemed like an excuse for him to dress in women's clothing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I am living for the Lord. So I am sweet. living for the Lord. I am living for the Lord. Maybe hallelujah. We'll... I feel him down in my spirit. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Number eight, Brian Levant. In spite of the fact that he's never made one decent film, he still seems to find a way to make more. We tried to tell you you didn't belong here. As the director of such gems as the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas, I am here to observe your species' mating rituals. So, get to it! And Snow Dogs, You're adopted. Levant seems to excel at making truly dreadful movies disguised as family films. He even manages to miss the mark of his movies being so bad they're good, with most just being shockingly terrible. Man, you really stink. Number seven, Rennie Harlan. Although some of his films have been moderately successful, with Rambling Rose even landing him some critical acclaim. I find that unbelievable. One can't forget the man who brought us the adventures of Ford Fairline. Deceitful bitches. Let's dance. And The Covenant. No one ever told me about the uh, effects, the, the damage. He even managed to set a world record for the biggest box office failure of all time with 1995's Cutthroat Island. See, I took your balls. When you've made it into the Guinness Book of World Records for how badly your films do, something is wrong. You're a liar, man. You don't care. You don't care about nothing. Number six, John Whitesell. Don't be eight. He's responsible for Malibu's Most Wanted, Deck the Halls, and the Big Mama's House sequels. I swear, if I see a Shaboyka, all hell's gonna break loose. Suffice it to say, White Cell is not aiming for quality filmmaking. While there may be room for feel-good entertainment and blue-collar humor, he seems to be secretly in a lifelong competition for director of least funny comedy. How's that feel, huh? Huh? How's it feel to be invisible? If so, he's definitely a strong contender. Yeah, yeah, tell me something I don't know. Number five, Michael Bay. What's cracking, little bitches? It seems as though he's been making different versions of the same movie for the last 15 years. While Bay's movies tend to be financially successful, his penchant for explosions, slow motion, and gluttonous special effects is overwrought. Your, your friends will love it. Plus, his heavy-handed approach to brain candy visuals leaves much to be desired in the way of actual direction. I don't understand. Big budget blockbuster flicks don't have to be mindless, but Bay seems to find a way. This is repression, what you're doing here. You're, you're ruining my oh, youth, for okay? for Pete's sakes, you are so defensive. Number four, M. Night Shyamalan. My goal as a filmmaker is to make, try to make, 
cultural phenomenons. He wowed us with the sixth sense. I see dead people. And then proceeded to disappoint us with a string of colossal plot twist failures. I was completely surprised by all of this. Shyamalan has struggled to follow up the critical acclaim of The Sixth Sense, choosing to maintain a supernatural element to his films, but failing to deliver on quality plots. What? No! His movies seem desperate to trick their audience, making his plot twists seem forced. And let's not forget what he did to The Last Airbender. Leave him alone! <laughs> Number three, Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer. Cindy, Cindy, your ass looks fat! <laughs> These two have mastered the art of taking a joke and running it into the ground. Their spoof films of movies like Scream and 300 are painfully unfunny. I don't know why you all have to always got my back for everything. I'm a responsible doll. Look at me, I'm booby feeding my baby. With cliched jokes and cringeworthy punchlines. But wait! There's more. Friedberg and Seltzer movies have somehow managed to become parodies of themselves, with their awfulness being the constant theme throughout. It's almost as if they're trolling the movie industry and succeeding. Dear John, two weeks together, that's all it took to fall in love with you. And in those two weeks, you did things to me no guy had ever done before. I still can't ride a bicycle. Number two, Brett Ratner. Apparently, being a douchebag comes with directing credits. I'm like a kid when it comes to that stuff. So. <laughs> Ratner has choked out some pretty lame films, including Money Talks, Rush Hour 3, Gotta. What? I'm no customer anymore! And Tower Heist. Hey, no spitting, blue shirt! Suck it, douchebag! But it's his antics off-camera that have made him unbearable. Between using homophobic slurs, claiming to bang and forget actresses, going further and further and further, and Eddie, and then all, all of a sudden they're butt naked and I'm getting naked, and his contempt for his audience, Ratner seems to have cornered the market on sleazebag directors. By the time y'all show some respect around here. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It feels like it. I'm just spending all my time watching my own movies. We were the Devil Dutch King. Now, 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 now. When you take things that are dated and you put it in a movie, it's already dated, so it's never going to seem outdated. Mm -hmm. If I if I disappointed them in any way, then I really want to apologize, because it wasn't my intention. My intention was just to entertain them. You know, little things here and there, and we talk about stuff, and you know, try to steer it in the right direction. And basically, he makes me look good. Number one, Uva Bowl. Bull has made some of the worst Hollywood movies on record. Known for turning video games into major motion pictures, including Blood Rain Give it to me, I'll rip it out of your face! and House of the Dead, Bull creates box office bombs religiously. I would sooner rot in your dungeon than sit at your table. He's regarded as the Ed Wood of the modern age, eliciting an online petition for him to retire from filmmaking. I will kill him. Bull likes to challenge his critics to boxing matches, but he should probably be thinking about another line of work. Wenn ihr immer schreibt, ihr wollt mich umhauen, foltern, kreuzigen, erschießen, dann kommt nach Vancouver und wir boxen. Do you agree with our list? Who do you think is the worst Hollywood movie director? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was spectacular. My butt's sore.